بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم آن بہاف آف ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دا کورس آف ڈیٹا کمیونیکیشن ان دا سکس سیمسٹر مائی نیم از حماد خالد خان اینڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو بی یور انسٹرکٹر فار دس اسپیسیفک کورس بفور وی کین ایکچولی موو آن ود دا ڈسکشن آف دا کورس آئی جسٹ وانٹ ٹو بریفلی انٹروڈیوس مائی سیلف ایز آئی ہیو آلریڈی ٹول یو مائی نیم از حماد خالد خان اینڈ آئی ہیو ڈن مائی ایم ایس ان الیکٹریکل انجینئرنگ with a specialization in telecom from Oklahoma State University, USA. I have been involved in the teaching and research related to communication and networking for quite a few years now, and it's a great chance and a great honor for me to be with, with you teaching this specific course. I hope that in the due course of this semester, we are going to have quite a good time and we are going to share some good learning experiences. Before we can carry on with the course, uh, let me give you a brief introduction of how this course is basically constituted. This data communication course is going to be your first interaction with any type of communication during the course of your bachelor's program. The course is intended for those students who have little or absolutely no knowledge about communication, data communication, or networking. Keeping this fact in view, what we are going to do is we are going to start from the very basics and then build up slowly and gradually as we move on towards the later lectures. The approach that we are going to take in the due course of data communication is that we are going to actually build up a big scenario. Karenge hum kya ke hum data communication ka ek pura system visualize karenge kuch ابتدائی لیکچرز میں کچھ دو تین لیکچرز میں وی ول ٹرائی ٹو بلڈ اپ دیٹ بگ ونڈو دیٹ ول ٹیل اس ویئر آر وی ہیڈنگ ٹو ہم کس سمت میں جا رہے ہیں ہمارے بلاکس کیا ہیں جو جنہیں ہمیں گریجولی اسٹڈی کرنا ہے تاکہ ہم ایک الٹیمیٹ ڈیٹا کمیونیکیشن سسٹم کو سمجھ سکیں سو وٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ان دس ان دیز انیشیل لیکچرز از وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ویجولائز ڈیٹا کمیونیکیشن سسٹم فرسٹ آف آل in its simple view, and then a little more complex view than the simple one. We will try to find out what are the different blocks, what are the different processes that actually constitute this system, and then we will try to study each of them one by one throughout the uh, data communication course. Uh, students, uh, let's discuss the course outline a little bit. The course uh, will consist of uh, 45 lectures in total. Then we are going to have uh, 10 to 14 uh, assignments. Uh, we are going to have two exams, one midterm and one final exam. The final exam is going to be uh, comprehensive and the midterm uh, will only constitute the course that we have uh, actually studied in that specific term. And then we have uh, something that we call as the GMDB or the Graded uh, Moderated Discussion Board. We are going to uh, specify a, a topic or a couple of topics and then uh, our class is going to discuss that in the form of a discussion board. Grading um, criteria, uh, the, the exam or the midterm is going to be 35% of the total grade. Then our uh, final exam is going to be 45% of the total grade. Uh, the assignments uh, that we will actually talk about, how many assignments will you get? It's going to be somewhere in between 10 to 14 assignments and the assignments are going to be 15% of the total grade and the rest uh, of the 5% of the grade is going to be uh, given to the GMDB or the uh, graded moderated discussion board as I have already told you. So this is our course outline. Textbooks that we are going to be using um, for, for the course, uh, we are going to be using two textbooks. Basically, we um, use uh, textbook ko uh, basically use Karenge for our uh, lecture purposes and then we, we will keep on consulting the other one too. So the basic textbook that we will be using throughout our course is uh, this textbook, uh, Data Communication and Networking, uh, second edition. The author is uh, Behroz Faroza and the publishers are McGraw Hill Publishers. This is going to be the uh, basic textbook that we will be using throughout our course. Our lectures will constitute uh, the information provided in this textbook. We are going to be uh, covering 
the exercise questions from this textbook, textbook 2. Uh, the other textbook that uh, we are going to be using uh, alongside this textbook is uh, this one. Uh, it's Data and Computer Communication, 6th uh, edition by William Stallings. And uh, it's uh, published by Prentice Hall uh, Publishers. So these are the two books that we are going to be using quite on and off during the course of our studies. Uh, make sure that you have these two books and the prescribed editions available with you because you're going to have homework assignments given from the back of the chapter problems from these two books. A little bit about today's lecture. Uh, in the being the first lecture of data communication course, we are going to cover uh, the definition of data communication. We will see what data communication is basically. Hai what is the difference between data communication and telecommunication? Uh, what are the different aspects of data communication that needs to be looked into? Kin chizo ko hame panna hai, kin chizo ko elaborate karna hai, ye hum dekhenge. Uske lava, hum ye bhi dekhenge ke is data communication ki history kya hai. How did this data communication evolve? Basically, it all started from uh, real back in the 19th century. So, we'll go back. Uh, and, and briefly look into the history of why did we actually need to uh, invent the data communication and, and why we actually used it for the purpose we are using it, it nowadays. Then we are going to move into, as I have already told you, a data communication system. We uh, a simple se data communication system. Ko study karenge. Uske baad, uske different components, ko dekhne ke baad, hum thode se aur complex kisam ke data communication system pe move karenge. And then finally, we are going to visualize the actual de practical data communication system that exists in real life. Ye data communication system hume ek base aur ek bunyad uh, provide karega ke jisko le kar hum sare course mein chal sakenge, jiski bunyad par hum ye par sakenge ke wo kaun se steps, kaun se blocks aur kaun se functions hain jinne hume study karna hai to understand a data communication system. Last but not the least, time permitting, we will also uh, go into the key aspects of data communication terminology. Hum kuch uh, key definitions uh, study karenge, jo ke humare aindha aane wale lecture mein uh, humari help karengi, jo ke hume kuch khas kisam ki technical terminology batayengi, jo ke aindha aane wale lecture mein that will help you understand the material. So first of all, before we actually start off with the discussion of what blocks constitute a data communication system and what do we need to establish a data communication system, let's briefly go through the definition of a data communication system. Data communication, as uh, you know, is a little different uh, field than telecommunication. Tele means, is a Greek word that means far. Communication is the exchange of information. So telecommunication means the exchange of information between two parties replaced far apart. Now, there is a slight difference in telecommunication and data communication. And you guys need not to be confusing the telecommunication concept with the data communication. Now, there is a slight difference between the concepts of telecommunication and data communication. Data communication as such is a subset of telecommunication. The information that we are going to be transferring or exchanging between two devices in data communication will mainly consist of the digital data or the binary ones and zeros. We will look into it further as we move on with our lectures. Coming back to the definition of data communication. Data communication is the exchange of information from one entity to the other using a transmission medium. I'll define it once more. Data communication is the exchange of information from one entity to the other using a transmission medium. As you can clearly notice from this definition that although simple enough, this definition leaves many questions unanswered. There are a number of factors in this definition that need to be elaborated and that need to be explained. Subse pehle, to aapne is definition mein dekha ke exchange of information. Exchange se kya murad hai hamari? What do we actually mean by the exchange of information? Whether this exchange should be in one direction 
or both the parties should be allowed to exchange with each other or how the particular format of this exchange should be. This is a very important topic that needs to be elaborated. The second point that you have already gone through in the definition is the information. Data communication could define karte hue, jab humne information ka word mention kiya, to information can be of many different types. That information can be text, that can be alphanumeric characters, that can be uh, photographs, that can be a lot of different things and we will talk about that in real detail about what specific kind of information can we use in our data communication system. The third point that we have seen in the definition is the entity. What do we mean by an entity? Kaun si aisi entities hain jo ke valid devices ya entities consider hoti hain when you are talking about a data communication system. We will look into those entities and we will discuss them further in the later lectures. Then comes the point where you had a transmission medium uh, in your data communication definition. Transmission medium kis tarah ka hona chahiye? What should be the specific structure of this transmission medium? What are the different uh, cables or wires or wireless media that can act as a valid transmission medium? What specific medium should we have to make the electromagnetic signals and the information travel over that transmission medium? We will look into that too in the later chapters. So the questions that I have already discussed, these are all the points and these are all the queries that will carry us forward through this course. We will try to find out the answers of all these questions. We will try to explore the world of data communication by exploring these small points that actually constitute the data communication concept. Before we actually move on uh, to the actual discussion of the data communication and the discussion of a data communication uh, system, we will actually look into a brief history of communication. This history will certainly help us understand a little bit about the evolution of data communication system and uh, why do we need those uh, modernized and modified data communication systems as we do have them right now. So let's look into a brief history of a data communication system. The data communication history, it is actually a blend of histories including three different fields that we need to look into. It is a combination of the history of telecommunication industry, the history of data communication itself and the history of internet. The history of data communication dates back all the way to 1837. The invention was the telegraph, the inventor was an American Samuel Morris. It was the first instance that humans can communicate with each other using what we know as a telegraph using a code that was named to be Morse code. This Morse code enabled uh, the building of telecommunication infrastructure of poles, wires as well as the development of communication hardware and protocols. The next step in the history of communication was the invention of telephone system. The telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. This was another huge step in today's busy telecommunication world. Then the invention of wireless communication by Marconi in 1890s set the stage for today's communication industry. By 1950s, the telephone and the telegraph companies had already developed a network of communication facilities throughout this industrialized world. Communication uh, was very well going on between different companies, between different individuals. There was a network of communication media that was spanned throughout the world. By 1970s, we you had the invention of all the databases, languages, operating systems and uh, the hardware and software. But the merger of the computer science and the data communication field took place in 1970s. That was the time when we people started thinking about why not data? Why just voice between two far off places? Why not try to find out some way that we can use to communicate data, files, photographs, letters between two far off places just the way they used to communicate voice between two far off places. This merger of computer science and the data communication field 
was initiated and stimulated by three major developments. The first development was the very large scale integration of the electronic components. The components did not even reduce in size, but they also became cheap. This actually initiated the availability of terminals and the communication equipment that actually uses those electronic components. The second step in this uh, development process was the evolution of new software. We, uh, the new software became available that actually initiated the development of data communication networks. The third step that actually fastened this merger between data communication systems and the computer science field is the competition among providers. Once the electronic components became cheaper and the software and the hardware became available, that initiated the formulation of data communication systems. This also fastened the race between different competitors in the data communication industry to make their processes, to make their equipment cheaper so that they can compete in the market. In today's ever-changing and busy world, the role of data communication is even important than ever. Today, we are in need of better, secure, and important of all, fast ways of communication. Gone are the days when you had to wait a couple of weeks to receive a letter all the way from USA. Now, you can receive the same information, the same letter in a split of a second by using what we know today by the name of data communication. Isi information ko fast karne ka jo role hamare paas tha that we have accomplished using what we know today by the name of data communication. Now, the aspects of data communication that are required in today's busy world as we have already seen, these three basic requirements, the accuracy, the speed, and the security, how to achieve these three aspects, how to achieve the software and the hardware that is needed for a reliable data communication system, and what should be the means of communicating this information. These are some of the topics that we are going to be exploring in the due course of this data communication. Now, let's try to understand the concept of data communication by using a simple example of human communication. When we communicate, we actually share information. When two humans talk to each other or they share their ideas, they are actually exchanging information. The same is the case with data communication. Isi tarah, agar hum dekhen, to communication between humans can be of two different types. Agar do insaan ya do human beings ek geographically limited area mein maujood hain, they are present in a geographically limited or a small area, this communication is known as a local communication. Similarly, if these two individuals are present in a wide space or wo thode se fasle par maujood hain, similar to the case of telecommunication, the communication at a distance, then the communication is known as a remote communication. When we actually refer to the computer information systems, then uh, there is a little change in the ordinary definition of data communication and the ordinary uh, concepts that are involved in communication. In the computer language, the data is always represented in the form of binary digits. It is always represented in the form of zeros and ones. Ye wohi zeros and ones hain, jo ki aapne in the due course of computer science dekhe honge. The computer systems actually speak with each, with each other or they deal in the language of binaries. Then these entities that we talked about in the definition of data communication system. In computer information systems, these entities are computers. Basically, jab do computers aapas mein ek information exchange karenge, to this type of communication is known as the data communication. Ab humne ye dekha ke information kis form mein hogi? Information hogi zeros or ones ki form mein. Entities kya hongi? Entities hongi computers present at far off places. So, aye, is is definition or computer information systems ki ki language mein zara apni data communication system ki definition ko dubara se modify karke dekhte hain. Let's look at this definition once again in the light of what what do we deal with or what do we mean by data communication in computer information systems. 
the modified definition of computer information systems, the communication between computer information systems, is the data communication is the exchange of information. Ab ye information kya hui? This information is actually the zeros and the ones, or the binary digits that we talked about a little while ago. Then the data communication is the exchange of information in the form of zeros and ones between two devices or entities. What are those entities? Ye entities hain hamare computers. A lot of times when we are dealing with data communication, we are going to have some other devices than computers. But most of the time, jab hum data communication systems ko define karte hain, we are talking about the exchange of information between two computers. So let's go through this modified definition once again. Data communication is the exchange of information in the form of zeros and ones or in the form of binaries between two devices that are preferably or most of the times computers via some form of transmission medium. Now just as we have gone through in the case of human communication, ye data communication bhi, there are basically general, generally two types of it. If the two devices or the two computers are present in a limited geographical area, agar ye dono computers jo ke aapas mein communicate kar rahe hain, ye ek restricted se area mein, restricted si jaga pe maujood hon, to we will call that kind of communication to be local communication. On the other hand, if these two devices or the two computers are actually present in a far off place or in two distant places, then this type of communication is known as the remote communication. Now, you must have noticed that these two different local and remote communications, the definitions are a little vague. Hame clarify nahi ho saka exactly ke kitne distance pe ek communication devices ya computers maujood hon jo ke aapas mein communicate karna cha rahe hon, to we will call this type of communication as local or remote ya kitna distance unke darmiyan preferably hona chahiye ke we can specify if the communication that is going on is local or remote. So we will actually clarify this specific concept. We will clarify the concepts of local and remote communication in the later chapters. So for data communication to occur, as we have already explained in the previous slides, we need to have a system. We need to have different components. We need to have different processes working together to form a system. Ye jo system hai, iske obviously kuch components bhi honge. To ek aisa system, ek aisa system jo ke different components or processes pe mabni ho, aur wo system act kar raha ho as a communication system, to us system ko hum kahenge a data communication system. The system that actually is a part of a communication uh, process, it is made up of communication devices the specific kind of hardware, a specific kind of software actually combines together to what we know as a data communication system. Now, before we actually move on to study the different components that constitute a data communication system, I would like to discuss a little bit about the effectiveness of a data communication system. We can look into three factors that actually affect and that actually tell us how effective a communication system is. The first point that I want to discuss is the delivery. If two devices are communicating with each other, then the sender or the source needs to make sure that the information or the, the data that it needs to send to the far off device reaches only that device and nobody else should actually receive it. This specific point or this specific thing deals with the first point that actually uh, considers or decides how effective a data communication system is. The second point is accuracy. If the files that we need to transfer from one point to the other reach altered in the, on the far off place, then there is no use of that data. Ek file, ek email, jo ke pandra lino ki takriban ek email hai, jo aap ek point se dousre point pe bhejna chate hai. Agar ye email dousre point pe pahunche aur is tarah se pahunche ke iski pandra lines jumbled up hon, so the receiver or this computer ne isko receive kiya hai, he or the person will have no means of arranging that information again. So how accurate the information 
that we can uh, send from one point to the other that also decides how effective a communication system is. Last but not the least, the third factor on which the effectiveness of a data communication system depends is the timeliness. How timely data is transferred from one device to the other greatly affects the performance and the effectiveness of a data communication system. You must have heard of the famous quote, better late than never. It is totally opposite in case of a data communication system. It, in data communication system, we say better never than late. If you are late, you are of no use. In data communication, the delay of microseconds and milliseconds are almost years. Therefore, the third and the most important factor on which the effectiveness of a communication system depends is the time that it, that it takes for the information to transfer from one device to the other. Let us try to understand these three points by a simple everyday example of a postal mail. The effectiveness of a postal mail system also depends upon these three points. First of all, if you are sending a letter from say Lahore to Islamabad, you have to make sure that the letter is delivered to the correct destination. The effectiveness of this mail system will depend on the factor if the letter is delivered to the right recipient or not. The second factor that affects the effectiveness of a postal mail is the accuracy. If the letter or the information that you are sending from say Lahore to Islamabad is reaching Islamabad in a state that is altered, it is not in the original state that you actually sent it from the sending end, then that will also affect on the postal mail in a very bad way. The third factor that affects the effectiveness of a postal mail system is the time it takes for the letter to reach from Lahore to Islamabad. If the time promised is say one week and the letter reaches Islamabad in about one month, it might be of no use to the recipient or the sender. The next topic that we are going to discuss in, in today's lecture are is the components of a data communication system. What are the different blocks, what are the different components that combine to make up a data communication system? Like any other system, a data communication system is basically made up of five components. Let us look into each of these components in detail. Like any other system, a data communication system is also made up of five components. The components are a message, the sender, the receiver, the transmission medium and a protocol. We are going to discuss each of these components in detail. The first component that we are going to discuss is the message. The message is the exact or the actual information or the data that needs to be communicated between the two devices. This is the information that the sender wants to exchange with the receiver, that the sender wants to send to the receiver. Now, the question is, what is the data in which form? For our data communication system, what is the data in which form? So, this data can also be in text, this data can also be in numbers, this data can also be in video. In fact, this data can be anything that can be represented in the form of binary ones and zeros. Now, let us try to find out a little bit about what are the different types of these messages that we can actually send on our data communication system. The first type is the message can be files, if the files can be made up of meaningful collection of records or any other information. The message can be the data or the information requests, similar to the requests that we actually uh, send in the form of database queries or the request for web pages on the internet, etc. Message can also be in the form of responses to these requests. Then messages can also be status messages that actually a full network sends to the network operator about the status of that network. The messages can also be control messages that two parties exchange in order to set up a communication. The messages can also be a the correspondence messages between the different users of the network. 
Let's try to understand these different types of messages using a simple example. In this specific slide, what we are talking about is the a simple conversation or a communication between a policeman that has actually stopped a speedy driver and the server, the police server that keeps the records of all the tickets and the driver information database. The policeman asks or sends a message over its homing device to the server asking about if there are any tickets that have been issued to this uh, driver that is actually driving a Maserati. The request goes to the server asking about any tickets, if there are any records of any tickets that is already available. The response comes that says, yes, a lot of tickets. Then a ticket summary goes, this is the third message and this specific message unlike the upper two messages is in the form of a file. This file will be a ticket summary regarding that specific driver. The fourth message is a status message. The server tells the homing device of that policeman that the system is going down in five minutes or it will stay down for another say one hour or two hours or any specific amount of time. The fourth message is a control message. The server, the file server that actually keeps the information database sees that it's, it's going to be a little busy for the next five or ten minutes and therefore it sends a message to the homing device telling all the policemen in all the area not to send any more requests because the server is currently busy. Similarly, there is, can be correspondence between the server, the policemen or the police staff sitting on the server end and between the homing device of any specific policeman and these types of messages will come under the correspondence messages. The second component of the data communication system that we are going to talk about is the sender. The sender is the actual device that sends the data, that sends the information. This sender can be a computer, it can be a workstation, it can be a video camera and it can be anything that is capable of sending the information from one place to the other. As we know and we have already seen, this specific information can be in the form that is different from the form that we can transmit over the transmission medium. Our transmission medium will normally carry the information in the form of electromagnetic signals. If the information produced by the sender is not in this specific form, this information will need to be processed before it can be sent on the transmission medium. The third important component of a data communication system is the receiver. The receiver is the device that actually receives the message. Similar to the sender, it can be a computer, it can be a workstation, it can be a television, it can be a computer monitor or in short, it can be anything that is capable of receiving the data that is sent from the sending end. The fourth and the most important component of a data communication system is the transmission medium. The transmission medium is the physical path that a message takes in order to reach from the source to the destination, from the sender to the receiver. This transmission medium can be of different types. It can be a copper wire or a twisted pair wire that you have normally seen at your homes used in the telephone system. It can be a coaxial cable that we normally use in the cable TV systems. It can be a fiber optic cable it can be lasers or it can be microwaves in the case of wireless communication. Now, we will see that the data needs to be transferred in the form of electromagnetic signals for it to be travel, traveling on the transmission medium. The data that we actually generate from the source will not or most of the time it will not be in a proper format to directly transmit it on the transmission medium. We are going to employ devices that can actually convert that bits into specific signals that can be transmitted over the transmission medium. Let us go to the slide and look into some specific transmission media that we normally have available in our daily life. 
let us look into the type of those transmission medium, the speed that they can carry data with and the cost that is uh, actually associated with each of these transmission medium. The first transmission medium that we are going to look at on the slide is the twisted pair wire. The twisted pair wire offers a speed from 300 bits per second to 10 megabits per second. This is the same twisted pair wire that you actually witness or see in your telephone systems at your homes. The cost in this specific case is low. The second uh, uh, type of transmission medium is the wireless medium or the microwave medium. This type of medium offers the speeds in range from 256 kilobits per second to 100 megabits per second. The price again comes under the low category. The third important transmission medium that we normally use is the coaxial cable, the same cable that we have in our homes used for the cable TV. The speed offered is 56 kilobits per second to 200 megabits per second. Price is again low. The last and by far the most important type of transmission medium that we use in our daily life is the fiber optic cable. Fiber, fiber optic cable offers speeds greater than any other communication medium or the transmission medium. The speeds are in the range of 500 kilobits per second to 10 gigabits per second. But in this specific case, the price is relatively high. The last component of a data communication system that we are going to discuss is the protocol. A protocol is defined as a set of rules that govern communication. The protocol acts as an agreement between the communicating devices. Without a protocol, two devices can be connected, but they will not be able to communicate. Let us try to understand the concept of a protocol by using a simple example. Let us take an example of two humans communicating with each other. In order to communicate, the two human beings will be needing to agree on a specific protocol between themselves. What is a protocol? Protocol, as I have already told you, is a set of rules that govern communication. So the two individuals will need to agree on the format, the language of their communication. For example, if one of the individuals speak French and the other individuals is only able to understand German, there is no way in the world that both of them will be able to communicate. So they have to agree on a set of rules, on a set of uh, actually the agreement between themselves or a contract between themselves in which they do agree that they will speak the same language, they will use the same format and they will send information at specific times. This set of rules is known as a protocol. Now, the data communication system that we just looked at was the simplified view of it. Let us move on to a little more complex data communication system with a little more components involved in it. Let us go to the slide and look at this specific data communication system. The data communication system that you are currently looking at involves a couple of more components that you have already seen. In this specific case, we are not dealing with a sender and a receiver, but we have two specific ends that are sending and receiving ends. On the sending end, the two blocks that make up the sending system are the source and the transmitter. Similarly, we have divided the receiving end into two blocks. The blocks are a receiver and a destination. And just similar to the previous case, we have joined these receiving and the sending systems by a transmission system. Let us try to understand this slide by a simple example of electronic mail. And let us try to understand what actually happens in a communication system when you actually try to send the mail using a data communication system. In your slide that is currently on, you can clearly see the computer connected to a modem with a public telephone network acting as a transmission medium. The modem and the computer can be parts of the same transmitting system. Let us try to understand the same example of electronic mail by keeping in view how the signals actually travel when the electronic mail is sent from a computer to the other. Let us go to the slide. In the slide, you can clearly see the input uh, device and the transmitter 
are the components of a personal computer. As represented by the circle 1, the user of a PC wishes to send a message M that is represented by input information to the destination. The user activates the email package on its computer. That package can be a Hotmail or a Yahoo Mail package. This message entered from the keyboard is stored in the buffer or the main memory for a sequence uh, for some amount of time in the form of a sequence of bits that is called out here as GT. The next block in our system is going to be the transmitter. The transmitter takes this character string or takes this series of bits and actually converts it into the form of an electromagnetic signal. This signal is also known as the analog signal and we will later elaborate the difference between a digital signal and an analog signal. The signal is then transmitted onto the transmission system. The transmitted signal as mentioned out here is S T. The transmission system can be a telephone network or it can be any type of networks that is capable of carrying the information from one end to the other. The transmitter converts the incoming stream GT into the signal ST and then provides it to the transmission system. The transmitted signal when it passes through the transmission system is subject to a number of impairments that depends upon the type of the medium. These impairments can involve but are not limited to noise, distortion and many other types of impairments. Therefore, the signal that is received by the receiver that is represented by RT out here is not the exact copy of the transmitted signal ST. The receiver attempts to estimate the original signal ST based on its knowledge of the medium and the received signal RT. The receiver produces a bit stream G-T. Again, this output data or G dash T is buffered in the memory for some time and then the data is presented to the user via an output device like a printer or a screen, etc. The data viewed by the user represented by M dash out here will usually be an exact copy of the data sent M. Let us try to understand the same data communication system by using a relatively simple example of a telephone system. In a telephone system, the sender is actually the person who speaks in the telephone. The message M in this specific type is in the form of sound waves. The sound waves are converted by the telephone into the electrical signals of the same frequency. Therefore, in this specific case, no change takes place from the source's information to the transmitter's information. The signals are transmitted without any modification over the telephone line. If you go back to the slide, you will clearly notice that in the case of a telephone system, the signals GT and ST are going to be exactly identical. Similar to the previous case, ST will again suffer some kind of distortion on the transmission medium. Therefore, the signal RT that is received by the receiver will again not be an exact copy of the sent signal ST. Therefore, in this specific case, the signal RT is converted back to the sound waves with no attempt of any kind of correction or the improvement of the signal quality. Therefore, M dash that is received by the destination is not an exact replica of the signal originally sent that was M. Still, because this is a telephonic conversation, a little bit of distortion does not affect the quality of the voice and it is still easily comprehensible. The data communication systems that we have looked at up till this point were a little simple in nature. Now let us move on to a real data communication system and let us try to find out what other blocks and what other processes are involved in the real time communication of data or voice from one place to the other. As you can see on the slide, this is 
an actual digital data communication system. The blocks that are involved are much more than we have already seen in the previous communication systems. This slide, um, the blue uh, blocks are the ones that are actually the uh, optional blocks, whereas the yellow uh, blocks are the essential blocks in this uh, system. The essential blocks or the yellow blocks are the ones uh, or they are exactly the similar blocks that you have already seen in the uh, previous two systems. Uh, these are the blocks that we actually need in the system for our, our system to communicate with the other systems. The other blocks can be added or can be deleted from our communication system based on the need basis. Let us try to briefly go through each of the blocks and let us try to briefly understand and explain what are the functions of each of them. You can clearly see the first block that is format block. The format block is actually an A to D converter or an analog to digital converter. This block takes the analog information from the information source and converts it back to the digital information. The second block is a source encoder that in addition to converting the analog information to the digital information also compresses this information. Now in a data communication system we can either have the format block just for digitizing the analog information or we can have the source encoder for both digitizing and compression of this information. The next block is the encryption block. In this block, we actually do the encryption of the source bits and convert them into a form that is secure to travel over the data communication medium. The next block is the channel encoding block. This block actually introduces some error correction and error detection bits in the message. The blocks labeled as multiplex and multiplex multiple access are the ones that actually take care of more than one users utilizing the uh, sources of the similar transmission medium. In simple words, if the channel capacity or the resources of a transmission medium needs to be divided among more than one users, then we need to have the multiplex or the multiple access blocks in our system. The modulation or the modulate block represents a specific process that is very important in our communication process. This modulation means that we actually transfer the carrier or the center frequency of the transmitted signal to another frequency that can accommodate much more signals through it. Then on the receiving side, we can see the same blocks back reversing the process that is actually done on the transmission end. One of the blocks that actually acts in the very middle, the synchronization block actually synchronizes the information that is transmitted from the transmission end and the receiving end. This block makes sure that the receiver is ready for the information and it is in proper condition to receive the information sent by the transmission system. Dear students, we were supposed to cover another topic uh, today that was the key terminology about the data communication, but it seems like we do not have enough time to cover it in today's lecture and we will inshallah do that in the next one. Let us summarize today's lecture before we can actually close out. We started off with the definition of data communication. We have seen कि कौन से एस्पेक्ट्स होते हैं डेटा कम्युनिकेशन की डेफिनेशन में दैट नीड टू बी एक्सप्लोर्ड जिनको हमें अगले चैप्टर्स में या अगले लेक्चर्स में कवर करना है देन वी मूव्ड ऑन टू अ ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन वी स्टार्टेड ऑफ विद अ वेरी बिगिनिंग 1937 एंड केम अप टिल टुडे एंड लुक्ड एट द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ डेटा कम्युनिकेशन इन द लास्ट वी लुक्ड एट अ डेटा कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम वी लुक्ड एट व्हाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अ डेटा कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम एंड देन वी looked at some of the examples like electronic mail and a telephone system and tried to understand a simple and then a complex communication system. Before we get off for today, let us look at some suggested reading for today's lecture. 
Section 1.2, Data Communication and Networking, Second Edition by Barrows A. Froza, and Sections 1.1 and 1.2 from Data and Computer Communication, Sixth Edition by William Stellings. Dear students, I hope you have enjoyed today's lecture. This was indeed an enjoyable experience for me. Agli lecture mein, phir milenge, tab tak, khuda office.